Welcome to episode three of Talk Exchange, the official podcast of the National Exchange Club. Today we have our hosts, Tracy Edwards and Christy Lindau from the National Headquarters, welcoming Lori Hyde from Harbor Exchange Club in Pinellas, Florida. For those of you who don't know Lori, she's an entrepreneur, an inventor, a network marketer, exchange club member, fundraiser, and much, much more. Today, they're going to share with you the secrets of fundraising, how to recruit new members, and other valuable club information. The best piece of advice Lori gives, however, is to make sure people in your club love what they're doing. We hope you enjoy episode three of Talk Exchange. Good morning, Christy. Good morning. I'm so excited to be here. And we had a great day yesterday at the Mommy Chamber of Commerce Business Expo. It was amazing meeting people out in the community who are excited to hear about exchange and philanthropy in general. Yes. And the way you explained philanthropy is more than just giving of your resources, your financial resources mm-hmm. and of yourself, I think really resonated with people. You know, I got a lot of feedback about that presentation and I think my favorite phrase that I heard was somebody said, you caused me to ponder and think, and I'll be thinking about this. And that's a sign that I really enjoyed the talk. So that excited me. I hope it does translate to people finding their passion through philanthropy. I hope so. And I'm so excited to be here today. And I'm super excited about our guest today. We have been talking to her about this podcast for a long time. In fact, she was the person who encouraged us to do this. And Lori Hyde from the Harbor Exchange Club in Pinellas, Florida, is literally one of the most interesting, excited, exciting people I know, so I'm really excited to have her here. And you know, this is the beauty of this podcast, Christy, is we can invite people like Lori from all over the country to join us. So Lori Hyde is an entrepreneur, a network marketer, an inventor, an exchange club member, a fundraiser, and she has all kinds of great ideas to help Exchange Club members everywhere. So I'm super excited to introduce Lori Hyde. Welcome, Lori. Hey, good, good morning. morning good morning. I hope I can live up to that hype because I'm not <laughs> sure. Excited, excited to be here for sure. All those other things I'm not so sure about. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did a presentation for our convention attendees in Greenville. And it was different, and it was well-received, and I think it got people thinking. And it was about fundraising and some different things they could do in their community, right? Tell us a little bit about that and then how you decided to roll with that presentation. Yeah, I mean, our biggest thing about fundraising is to get people involved. So we like to show things. We like to do things with mentorship and help change the lives of people in our community. So it's not just about, oh, let's just raise a bunch of money and, you know, do whatever. It's a little bit about showing and thinking outside the box. How much fun can we have with it? How much fun can people come and do with it? And how can we show other members to share ideas and share mentorship and share all the things that exchange can do for your community? So that's what we really try to do. Uh, when Kenny and I did the presentation, we thought a little outside the box. We did our presentation to try to get people to think, like, why do you want to fundraise? Not just because you're making money, but how do you fundraise and make a difference in your community? So what we do, particularly in our club, is try to exchange ideas. Like we had our spaghetti dinner fundraiser last night, and that is for we donate the money to Veterans Matter. How we do things outside the box a little bit is we donate the money on Facebook Day of Giving. So what happens is our our donation gets doubled. So different things that clubs can do that are very simple, very, very simple things, if everybody exchanges all their ideas, we can all help grow our fundraisers. So we we have housed over 33 homeless veteran families through Veterans Matter. With our little fun, with our little spaghetti dinner, we only do it from four to eight on a Tuesday afternoon, you know, close to Veterans Day. But by saving the money for Facebook Day of Giving, it doubles our donation, helps it go farther. So if you look for certain things like that in your community, that's how we try to do things and make a bigger impact. Um, so our spaghetti dinner was last night. Actually, I was texting with Christy. I'm like, we're at our spaghetti dinner right now. We have a blast. Like every, 
the VFW that we do it at, we have a little got it game. They donate the money to us. So that's a lot of the things that we try to help, um, you know, to help grow the, the fundraising efforts that we do. Now, for example, Saturday, there are two other fundraisers that we've been invited to help participate in, um, one with the American Legion, one with another exchange club. So all the ideas that we have, we all talk about it all the time. Trust me, well, we that's talk awesome. about it all the time. And I love how you're partnering with another exchange club and the American Legion, and that shows that people know that you're in the community, which is great. We hear from so many clubs that say, we don't want to toot our own horn. What would you say to those clubs, Lori, if they just want to kind of be under the radar and they don't do it for the attention? No, it's not about attention. It's about get your name out there, get known in your community. And people, when we go out to the community, we spend a lot of time out in our community. When we go out, people are like, yeah, yeah, we'll help, we'll donate, we'll sponsor, we'll do, you know, we can get so much, so much cooperation from all the local businesses, local, other local entities that help us. We do a lot with the, um, I, one suggestion that I would have is everybody should join their local chamber of commerce because yes. so many businesses are involved in that. And that really helps get your name out there. Uh, for example, not to toot our own horn, but I will, is yes. that we won, we won exchange, we won, um, the, an award from our chamber of commerce last year for, Awesome. nonprofit of the year. So that was pretty awesome, right? Mm -hmm. But by us being out involved in the community, we would never have, it's not about the award, but it's about that people know who we are. You know what I mean? So that's it. all the money that, right, all the money that we donate, all the fundraising that we do, um, you know, and we promote exchange all the time. Well, your community clearly sees the value of having the exchange club in the community. Yeah, correct, Lori. I think, you know, this is something that we talk about with other exchange clubs in our district leadership when we train them yearly. Um, we want clubs to make those partnerships and those connections in the community because that's how you can better serve your community, right? But you can't do that if people don't know who you are. Exactly. That's true, think, and really the award is just proof of your powerful, positive impact in the community, so we encourage clubs to do it for the awards because the award is simply proof that you're doing something. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. We have so many people that always come to our fundraisers, and they're like, we have so much fun, and they always <laughs> want to help. Like, <laughs> there's no... No one has more fun than us, Tracy, you know. I believe, so, I do know that, yes. Right, right. <laughs> but, it, but that's what makes it, uh, that's, that is, uh, let me say, that's a suggestion that I would have to every exchange club. Do not try to get members, do not try to get people to join the membership on just a conversation. Invite them to one of your events. Yes. Let them see all the fun and all the things that you do and let them see how much good you can do in the community. That is the way we recruit people more so than just meeting someone and saying, hey, you should come and join Exchange. They're like, they don't understand. But when you show them what you have going on, all the people and all the members that are involved in doing the, the fundraiser or whatever the, uh, the event is, then it really helps them want to get on board. For example... Um, a lot of our friends always come to all our events and we've gotten quite a few of them to join just because they're like, hey, we really want to be part of this because once you show them what you're doing, it's a lot better than trying to explain it to them in a conversation. Yes. So that's a suggestion I would have for other exchange clubs to grow membership. For sure. Makes sense. So invite them to a project or a fundraiser or something you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a great idea. Mm -hmm. So, Lori, when we talk about um, you as you have a great reputation, the queen of fundraising, how, how would you be able to summarize your presentation for our current audience? What are some of those other ways that they can think outside of the box to help improve well, I, their fundraising capabilities? I say a few things like um, a few things like get your club involved in something that they're passionate about, okay? Yeah. Mm. So some of the fundraisers that we do, we do the one for Veterans Matter because a lot of our club is passionate about helping veterans. 
And we also meet at the VFW. That's our meeting place. So it's a great partnership. Partner, mm. partner with people that have like-minded goals with you. That right. really helps. The, the second thing is when you get your club involved in something they're passionate about, like we do a lot of fundraising for youth, foster kids, you know, things like that. Find out their why. Like, why do you want to fundraise? Why? W- Me personally, like I've said, I've said earlier, I want to do programs that help more with mentorship because I feel like if you can change the trajectory of a kid's life more so than just, you know, not opposed to anything else, but more so than just giving them a Christmas present or a backpack. If you can change the trajectory of their life, then you can really put them on a path to do, you know, great things. And that changes your community as a whole. The second thing is when you do mentorship, okay, let me say, I might not be a mentor. I might not be a mentor that can help kids do anything in particular, but we can partner with different foundations, different organizations. As as we help them fundraise, we can help them be able to promote the mentorship programs that they have. So don't feel like just because you're not a mentor or your group is not a mentorship program that you can't help people that are good at mentors, you know, mentoring kids or mentoring other other people, other adults, whatever the program is. Mm-hmm. And Lori, I like what you're you're touching on right there. And um, one of our main focuses when you talk about marketing to your community and recruiting potential members and just simply getting the word out about what your club is doing is to talk to people about why it would interest them. Put yourself in their shoes and figure out what it is about the club that you think would be appealing to them. Um, That is opposed to telling people just what your club is and expecting that that will be enough to interest them. Right, right. Tailor it it to. If you show them, you know, visual is so much better. If you show them, hey, this is what we're doing and this is how we accomplish it, and, you know, we could use your help, volunteer, do whatever it is, um, I'll I'll, I'll go back um, a ways. So, me personally, I'm friends with, with Kathy, um, you know, Kathy Mize, right? Kathy Mize, when our we media were past national. Our, yes. our media past president, right. She lives here. She's in our Harbor Exchange Club. So that was a great help to us starting the club. But when, when my kids were in high school, we started doing programs with Ready for Life mm-hmm. and also Exchange Club. So what happened is we transitioned into, hey, let's start our own club because we could do a lot of good in the community. So that's how we got started. And our first project was a cornhole tournament, which was awesome. awesome. And I'm going to tell you this, from going to convention and, you know, national and district conventions and talking to other people about all their ideas and all the things, we came up with some signature events of our own. That's how we came up with the cornhole tournament. We're like, yeah, what's a cornhole tournament? Yeah, how do you do that? And then we came back to our town, and we started it, and it's done very well for us. It's kind of our signature event. So I think that one of the biggest things that you can do with your club is get them involved in going to convention, You know, getting on, um, on a list to go to the other exchange club things. Like we, have, we have it easy in Florida because we have a lot of exchange clubs that are close by us. And we all work kind of together and we do a lot of things. And having the, you know, national president in your club doesn't hurt either, right? (laughs) So so it does make it easier for us because we can reach out. But don't be afraid to reach out to people and find out what are their ideas and how are they getting things done. Because uh, we did a presentation at at our district convention and one of the other clubs on the other side of Florida I say stole our spaghetti dinner idea, which was amazing, right? That Mm -hmm, was the whole point. Like we shared the idea with them. They went on to do a spaghetti dinner and raised a bunch of money. And we had, it was amazing because that is the whole point, right? That's the whole point of getting people aware of exchange and what we can do and how we can accomplish things. We see a lot of that, Lori. That's a great example. We see a lot of that on our exchange club members, Facebook page. Um, if there are people listening who aren't a member of that page, then I highly recommend that you look at it and join. 
there's a lot of idea sharing. People asking questions. Yes. How did you make this happen? How did that work? Um, asking general questions and getting this feedback from, from members all over the country who say, oh, yeah, we've done something like that. I've got a great idea. Or other people who follow the conversation because they feel like it's a fundraiser or a recruiting event, some other opportunity that would fit well with their current membership. Right. I love what Lori said, too, about asking members and potential members, what do you want to do? What are yes. you passionate about? You know, rather than they come to the club and you just tell them, here's what we do. It's important to find out what do you want to do. And it, one, one thing I love about Exchange is our platform allows people to do that within yes. our programs of service and our national project. It's the breadth and width of those things let people come in and share what they're passionate about so that they can do something that's maybe different that the club hasn't done before. Absolutely. Yeah. That's exactly right because we have we don't really have parameters. It's kind of wide open. What do you want to do and how do you want to accomplish it? And how much good can you do in your community based yes. on what your club is capable of? Every club is capable of something different. Everyone has their strong suits and Getting involved in your community is really, it takes an effort, but do what you're good at. Don't, don't worry about what you're not good at. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Do what was, works for your club and what your people are passionate about. You know, our two, fun, our two fundraising projects that we really do are youth and veterans. We don't mm -hmm. get too involved in a lot of other projects. We do, you know, community service projects. We've done, we've built free little libraries and, you know, mm -hmm. do wave of flag ceremonies. We get involved in parades. It's not like we don't, but our two main fundraising projects are for, you know, foster kids. Uh, we're doing a project right now with Chi Chi Rodriguez Youth Foundation. So that helps mentor kids, you know, nice. through their school. So all the different things that we do, make sure that your people in your club love the idea of what you're doing. That's my biggest suggestion. Because if they don't like it and they're like, yeah, it's not really my thing, they're not going to be wanting to be as involved. Exactly. So get them in, on board to what is really works for your club. I don't care what it is. It, it, it can be anything that you want it to be. I've talked to so many clubs at convention. I love going to convention and talking to everyone and learning what everyone's doing. And Tracy will tell you, I talk nonstop to all the people and say, <laughs> yes. what are you guys doing? What, how are you accomplishing it? But that's how you learn, and that's right. how you grow your club, and that's how you grow your fundraising events. And I know a lot of people say, yeah, it's not all about fundraising, but if you can contribute, like I said, to the people that can mentor other people or help contribute yes. to the programs that are out there that really need just the money because they have the program and we we're we're not we don't have a program we're not that we're not a business we're not an entity that does these things but we can do the fundraising and that that's my passion the fundraising part of it well i like that and really you know it is all about the money because the money enables you to deliver these services to people in the community but I love what you said. How much good can you do? That sounds like a new tagline. How oh, much good can you do? I like that. Right. So now, you and I have talked a lot about this podcast. Where do you see this helping to get the word out about exchange, connecting people, and expanding awareness of exchange to a larger market? Yeah, I think that exchange is one of the best kept secrets, and it shouldn't be. Um, you know, I'm very involved in the digital marketing community. I would like to see Exchange get invited or, um, you know, just like reach out to other podcast people so that you can grow Exchange through mm -hmm. reaching all their uh, members or all their followers. Um, for example, I was just at a convention and talked to a bunch of people about podcasting. So not only does your audience get to hear what we're talking about right now, which is the Exchange audience, you get on someone else's podcast, their audience gets to learn about exchange. So that's what I would like to see happen is that as this podcast grows, I mean, it's a, it's a 2022 way of communicating, you know yes. what I mean? So it really helps. It really helps like people want to be involved and listen to how are other people doing things. And that, and that's why I, I was so passionate about 
you know, Tracy, I want to talk about fundraising <laughs> yes. to, the, to the other exchange members, but, you know, to reach out to other people that even if you want to think about starting an exchange club, you know, tell me, you tell me how many exchange clubs are there and how many members nationwide. People don't know that this is open to everyone in your community. So right. if you don't have an exchange club close to you, start one. And the nicest thing about exchange is that we have the power of exchange to do uh, all the things to grow our club, right? We have, we have like the, um, the ways to get things established, you know what I mean? Like a guidelines, membership site, all right. the different things. So you're not starting from scratch. You're starting with all the power of exchange, national exchange behind you, especially when you're, you're building a club you have a guideline, you know what I mean? And you have an mm -hmm. established organization, so it makes it super easy to start a club. And then you have all these people that are within the organization to help you with all the fundraising ideas or all the efforts of how do I do this or how do I accomplish that? <laughs> how many members and how many clubs are there nationwide so people know that are That's listening right. to this podcast outside of this uh, organization? Well, that's true. And I like what you said, because, you know, we do make it easy on people who want to join exchange because we have that structure in place. Right. That is one thing that we're um, very proud of is that we take the uh, grassroots efforts that a club would have to normally put in and it's built into the process so that members can jump right in and get their hands dirty, so to say. Right. So, so just for the people that are listening that maybe not are involved in exchange, how many members and how many clubs are there nationwide? Well, we say that we have, you know, those numbers change almost daily. Right. We run the reports daily. We say that we have more than 18,000 members and more than 600 clubs across the country. So, so that's a huge number it is. for it's us to try to reach out to people and get if everybody in their community shared this podcast with just, you know, 10 people. Right. That's a huge number to help get people involved in knowing more about exchange. So that that's part of my suggestion is that just get people involved. We have 18,000 members, give or take, that can reach out and just ex share this podcast with their community, and that helps show what is exchange doing and how are they accomplishing it. And say, hey, jump on our podcast Everybody drives. Everybody, you know, listens to something on whether it be the radio or something. So every and people are on airplanes. People are sitting at at um, you know Starbucks just having a coffee. They could be listening to a podcast and get exchange on their radar for podcast listening. I think that would be a huge help to help grow exchange. Right, because regardless of anything else that changes in the marketing world. You know, since um, I graduated from college until now, things have changed drastically. But the one constant is that word of mouth is still your most important tool. Yes. Exactly. That will never change. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. So, Lori, when we talk about your club and how they identify what your members would like to do that year, is that a, is that a planning meeting that you all have at the beginning of the year, the calendar year, the fiscal year, or is it just organic through club meetings? Uh, sometimes, some, all of the above, because like I said, we started our, our uh, signature event as the Cornell Tournament. Mm -hmm. Then we came up with the idea of doing the uh, veterans, you know, spaghetti dinner because we got involved with Veterans Matter by going to convention, meeting yes. other people and learning what's available out there, which is a huge thing. You know, when you bring all these like-minded people and keep in mind, we're all volunteers. So all these like-minded people that love helping their community and doing good things, you know, when we're all together and we all exchange ideas, it's amazing, right? So we've grown, those are our two main events. Uh, a lot of the other things that we do kind of come organically okay. because we've been invited to do other events um, and we've been invited to do things with other clubs. So as they come up, we bring them up at a meeting and everybody decides like, hey, yeah, let's do that. Or, hey, yeah, that's a great idea. Let's do this. So uh, 
that's we do plan a couple signature events for sure. Those two, cornhole and our and our spaghetti dinner, are two events that are always on our calendar. They've just grown into such fun events. And then everything else kind of comes organically as members bring ideas to us or different projects that we'd like to do, different fundraisers that we kind of yeah. jump in on. You know, say, hey, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll do that. That sounds fun. <laughs> Why not? The, the Why number one, do? the number one factor for the number one factor for us deciding is, it, is it going to be fun? Because it's boring. <laughs> That's <we're out>. right. <laughs> yeah. So, the one thing that I think a lot of our clubs learned through the pandemic, which it seems like your club demonstrates very, very well, is the ability to be fluid. You have to be able to change and adapt to what's going on at any given time. And if another organization or a group of people come to you and say, we have this need, you have the ability to say, yes, we can squeeze that in. Yes, we can make it happen. You don't rely on a calendar that you developed in July or January. No, I, I think it's really hard to do that. I mean, as much as you might want to try, we are not a business. You know what I mean? Right. So as, as the need comes up or people ask us to be involved in some different programs, we as a club decide what we'd like to do, but honestly, mostly we're like, yeah, we're on board. Like we we love helping. We ha we love doing projects. We love thinking outside the box. We have a lot of fun with all the projects that we do, and bringing members and friends into our into our community because of that really helps grow exchange for us. Well, you're right, and I love hearing about how flexible and responsive your club is, and, and really the camaraderie in that club where people can get just get together and decide to do something that's fun, that they're all happy about, and that they feel good about. So how much good can you do? This conversation has been awesome. Thank you for joining yeah. us to share so much that can help Exchange Club members, that can help people who are interested in learning about more about Exchange. Yeah. And Lori, thank you for squeezing yeah. us in today. I know Lori has mentioned that she's working <laughs> no. long days and long, long hours, but she had this information she couldn't wait to share, and we appreciate that you've taken the time. Absolutely. Yeah. It's been so yeah, much I love fun. talking about fundraising. Yeah. <laughs> well, fun. we'll have you back again. So thank you for the conversation. Promise? Thanks for sharing I'm holding your ideas. you to that. Absolutely. Hey, <laughs> promise? Because yes. I'm going to hold you to it. Oh, please right. do. Well, thank you for helping us get this kicked off. It's awesome, and we appreciate you. Yeah, I appreciate you guys, too. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lori. Have a great day. Lori Hyde hey, from Harbor too. Exchange Club, everybody. Thanks, Lori. Yeah. See you. Bye-bye.